Welcome to another video on this YouTube channel. My name is Dobias Veninge and you can find me on Twitter at NetworkingDVI. If you are managing a network infrastructure, we all need to ask ourselves the following question. Do I want to secure my switches? Of course, this is a stupid question. Anybody will answer yes. In order to provide connectivity, the network infrastructure is the key component. We would be stupid in not securing these devices. The second question would be, how are we going to secure our switches? There are so many aspects and features available that provide security in Aruba OS switches. And within the latest Aruba OS switch software release, a new feature has been implemented. And this feature is able to secure the switch control plane. And in this video, we are going to focus and explore this particular feature. The name of the feature is Control Plane Policing. In other words, COP. So let's dive into a little bit more detail. What you see here is an Aruba OS switch model 3810M. And a switch consists of multiple components. Some components take care of very fast switching, other components take care of providing power, and in every switch there is also a CPU component. And to that CPU, multiple traffic will be forwarded. And if there is too much traffic forwarded to the CPU, the CPU will just start simply slow in responsiveness or just stop responsive. So let's dive into a little bit more into what kind of traffic will be forwarded to the CPU. And we can divide this traffic into three different types of classes. The first one is control plane. Simply said, all the traffic that forms a network. This is traffic that can be sent or received by the switch CPU. On layer 3 this can be OSPF or BGP packets. On layer 2 this can be spanning tree or loop attack traffic. The second traffic type will be data plane. This is user generated traffic to be forwarded to another end host. For example, a known IP destination. And the third and last one is management plane. And this is all traffic used to manage the switch. For example, SSH, FTP, SNMP. So let's demonstrate the feature named COP. In our small demo setup, we have a switch called 3810M. I'm also using Kali Linux in a virtual machine to simulate a denial of service attacks. The tool I'm using to simulate this denial of service attacks is called HPing. And I will demonstrate two types of denial of service attacks. The first one is, is sending a lot of traffic with only the TCP SYN flag set. And we're going to flood the traffic, which means we try to send it as much as possible with random source IP address to the target IP of the switch. The second denial of service attack we're going to do is called UDP flooding. So we send a lot of UDP data to a particular destination port with target IP, uh, the switch IP address. So let's move on to the consoles to implement and demonstrate this particular feature. Here we have our demo environment. Let me first explain what we have here. On the left bottom side, I have a small picture of our demo environment. This is the 38 temp switch. I have two connections to the same switch, so don't worry, it's the same switch. One is a console port and one is an SSH session just for me, so that I can show multiple activities on the switch. And here is my Kali Linux terminal, where I'm going to be able to kick off the uh, denial of service attacks with the tool called HPing. So let's move on. First, let me go into one of the, one of the consoles of the switch and do show COP question mark where we can sh where we can show the the cop configuration let me show the status everything is at the moment disabled now so there is nothing enabled also not from a user defined perspective let me show you that status and everything is disabled there is no user defined configured so there is a default and there is user defined so there is a couple of classes that are automatically in there which we shall see later so what we're going to do now in order to monitor our process activities, we need to enable process activities on the switch. So we're going to convic. Uh, we do it every 30 seconds. Yes, we're going to enable it. And let me do show CPU processes. What you can see, uh, we have one session because we have an active session there, uh, but all the other three uh, our idle process have, have enough CPU power. So let me now start an HPing and I already type in the command. So as said, we will start with the first one, as we see here. And let me kick this one off and see what's happening on the switch. So we need to monitor the process tracking time here, the process activity. There we go. 
And what you'll see is now System Services 32 will kick in. At the moment, it's 4% CPU. It's 9% CPU. And what you will see is that this will start to increase 14% CPU, 19, and every 3 seconds we are refreshing this. 21, you'll see it's going up and up and up and up. And we keep on flooding messages that need to be handled by the CPU. 46 CPU. What is also scary, I think, to see is how easy it is without protection, without security mechanisms in place in order to attack one of these machines. So let me kick this off and stop. Let me stop this and then we will see that the CPU will, will reduce over time and slowing down back to, to normal. So uh, as you can imagine that this will definitely have impact on the responsiveness of the CPU of the switch. As you see, the CPU will go down and it will go up to uh, down to zero again and will remove that particular process name. So let me move this away also here. There we are, we are back in configuration mode. So what we're going to do now is configure a control plane policing COP. So that's COP. Let me do a question mark so that you can see. We will start with traffic class, but I also will enable logging because that, that's nice to see syslogging if something has happened. And then we are going to configure the traffic class. Traffic class is what you see here is all the default classes that are in there uh, already defined for you that you can use. So what I'm going to use for this one is traffic class station IP. So there's more or less every IP traffic that will hit the CPU. Um, station IP, station IP, question mark. I'm going to limit. Uh, I'm going to limit. So you have a default rate. And you can you can set up the rate. So let me let me put the default rate in here, and then we do enter. Now control plane policing is is configured. So that's how easy it is. So let me do show cop. Uh, oh, sorry. We can show config first. And as you can see, uh, let me go up here a little bit. Station IP is now enabled with a default of 512. So if you do status, show COP status, then we can go up, enabled, and at the moment there's no threshold overwritten. So that's fine. So what will be interesting now is that I'm going to uh, I'm going to kick off here the show show CPU process with a refresh of three seconds again. Then I'm going to kick off here the denial of service attacks again and see what's happening now. Let's give it a couple of seconds. See what's happening on the processor activity. Oh, let me start it again. And let's see what's happening here on the There you go. We have the process activity going on here. Oh, let me restart this session. And it's only now at 1%, right? You don't see it is moving up. So let me show COP status. And as you can see, station IP is enabled, the threshold is overwritten, and this is the violation package. What I can do here is I can do show uh, log minus r copp, and you can see that copp thresholds is uh, exceeded for traffic class station IP. Packets are being dropped. So this way, if I show you again the not the, the CPU processes, refresh three seconds, you can see that the CPU is now only at two percent. So it's not hitting the 50, 40s, or keep on moving up. So this way. We can protect other people. Uh, we can protect the, the switch device in our infrastructure from a denial of service attack. So let me close this one off. Let me disable this configuration first. Um, let me go config. Let me do no COPP. And then you can do traffic class station IP limit. Uh, and that was the default. So now if I now do a show COPP status, 
you can see that this one is disabled. So now we don't have any. Uh, let me also restart my session here so that I have two sessions again. So that you can see that now we have everything back to default. So if I would kick off the denial of service attacks, it would definitely hit the control plane policing. So now let's try one other one and let's try one that is um, uh, focusing on UDP flooding and where we can do a user defined kind of setting. So I want to show you how you can also create a user defined uh, control plane policing. Doesn't need that it's needed for this UDP one, but it's good to see multiple ones. So let me show show CPU. Uh, let me first type process activity. Pretty yes. Let me do show CPU process refresh three seconds, and then let's kick off this one. Let's see what's happening again. You can see we got the system 32 kicking in 80% CPU. 32% CPU. You see the maximum uh, microseconds it needs also. Oh, it stopped. Let me do this one. So 43 seconds CPU. So 45 seconds. So I think you understand what the hell happened now. So let me close this off. Let me close this one off. Okay, so now everything will be back to normal. We killed it. So let's focus on what we need to do. So user defined, we already saw that um, that there is no user defined config, nothing in there. So we're going to uh, configure one. So what we are going to do is we're going to configure our own user defined COPP. So what we will do is COPP user defined. It will be number one. And then we're going to do IPv4. Uh, well, it can be any address, that doesn't matter. Any address of the user defined policy. We call UDP traffic, uh, port number is 1234. And uh, let's limit it to, well, let's do um, 128 or 512 for again, 512 for example. Enter. So now if you do up user defined config you can see that we have one defined and if we do status we can see the status so what will happen now is let me do here conf t process activity 30 show cpu uh, process refresh well take five seconds this time there we go kick this one off and see what's happening here and you can see that we're already dropping packets We're already dropping packets here. Oh. And you can see that now it doesn't even hit uh, the CPU. So, but we keep on dropping packets. So this way we can protect also against UDP flooding the switch CPU. So I hope um, you can see the CPU kicking in there. We can even show log minus R COPP again. Show log minus R COPP. And we see the multiple events also in the syslog coming forward in the logging to debug and verify what's going on. I hope you saw how quickly and how easy it is to overload a particular switch. So you definitely need to take measure it and use these security features to protect our infrastructure devices for these kinds of easy attacks that you can do on the switching infrastructure. And as a Ruba OS switch, I really love that they have all these features baked in without any additional licensing or something. You can just turn them on, test them up front and turn them on. If you want to find more information and don't know where you look for, go to the Aruba OS Switch Advanced Traffic Management Guide. Go to Chapter 15, Classifier Based Software Configuration, Paragraph Control Plane Pleasing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments field and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you find this video useful, it would be great if you can like it. When you're not yet a subscriber to the channel, please do so and we will promise to keep on making these videos for you. Thank you very much and hope to see you next time.